Thank you. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Rahul. Uh, I'm a software engineer at Google. I work on Android performance normally. But today's talk is not about that. Today's talk is about something more fun. It's about hacking Sony cameras for fun and profit. The camera in question is a Sony Alpha A7R Mark V. And I, I bought this recently. It's one of the nicer cameras that Sony manufactures. And uh, the camera is, has plenty of features, including support for uh, controlling the camera through Bluetooth low energy, as well as Wi-Fi direct as uh, some of its interfaces. And it's actually a really good camera. Uh, so, However, you might be wondering why I ventured into this path. Uh, the, my, my problem started when I looked at what Sony's apps ecosystem had to offer. And so Sony has two apps. The first one is called Imaging Edge Mobile. This app has around 10 million downloads on the Play Store, has 1.9 stars, and occupies something like 500 megs on, on your phone. And you might be wondering, what in the world is an app like this? Like, why, is it, why does it even need 500 megs on your phone? Uh, thankfully, this app has been deprecated uh, and replaced with a new app, which is called the Creators app, which is more recent, but the ratings are already trending downwards. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, I looked at the ratings, and it was 3.9. Now it's like 3.3. It's, like, it's not looking good. It has half a million downloads. So uh, I wanted, and the reason why these apps are slow blo so bloated is because these apps have too many features, in my opinion, uh, packed into a single app. So Sony really wants you to use its uh, cloud storage and sync. I really don't care about that. Uh, Sony uh, wants you to sort of use the community for inspiration, you know, people who have similar cameras so you can learn from their techniques. It's actually a good idea. Uh, the, the two key features that I think the app offers are remote previewing and remote, uh, and remote triggers, essentially being able to take pictures remotely uh, and using an intervalometer. And, and then the other bit is to transfer photos from your camera back to your smartphone if you want to share them. The one feature that I really, really care about is remote control. That's like, if, if Sony made an app that just did that, I would be really happy. Uh, they don't do that. So that's where uh, the hacking begins. Now, we'll try and understand how Sony's BLE remote protocol actually works under the hood. We'll build, uh, because this is a Kotlin conference, we'll build a Compose multi-platform app to sort of build our, to essentially uh, you know, reverse engineer the protocol and e expose those features through the app. And then we'll try and profit from that. Uh, there's plenty of people who use the camera. Hopefully, some of them might be interested. Uh, before we go about uh, you know, looking into reverse engineering Bluetooth low energy, you need to understand a little bit about how the protocol works. So let's look at that. So the key things with Bluetooth Low Energy, there's uh, two primary components. The first one is called Generic Access Profile. This is the one uh, used for device discovery. This is how devices will discover each other to connect to each other. And the second one is called GAT. It's the Generic Attribute Profile. This is how you send commands and, uh, you know, and read and write data to the actual connected uh, the peripheral device. And this is how you can also receive notifications from that device. We'll look at each of them in more detail. Let's look at GAP first. GAP has uh, primarily two device roles. The first one is called the peripheral device. This is the device you typically want to connect to. This is the one that you want to control. Uh, and then there's the central, which is the controller, which is typically a more fully featured device. This is the one that has the smarts that can control the peripheral. And in our case, it's the smartphone. Uh, the way gap discovery works is the peripheral device just keeps uh, advertising its presence uh, at a regular frequency and has about 31 bytes of data in the manufacturer-specific data uh, that you can use to sort of uh, ensure that this is the device that you want to pair to. And once the pairing and the bonding process is complete between those, these two uh, device profiles, you're sort of done. At that point, advertising can stop, and then the, the normal uh, GAT protocol resumes. And so those are a lot of words. Let's just put that into a picture. So a peripheral device broadcasts some advertising data. It happens at a regular frequency. At, at some point, the, the central comes in, connects to it, and once the pairing and bonding is complete, you're done. At that point, you don't no longer care about advertising packets. Now, there's the other bit, which is the generic attribute profile that we talked about, which is how you send commands and read and write data uh, to the actual connected device. And the key thing to remember is uh, 
you have a profile. A profile is just a logical, uh, it's just a logical concept. Imagine a committee, and so let, let's say you were designing an API, but the API was designed by committee, and instead of using names, they used 16-bit integers for lookup tables for what was the thing that you were trying to use and what APIs it exposed. That's essentially uh, GAT in a nutshell. So you have these things called profiles. This is how you logically group them. Think of them as a RESTful resource if, you were, if, you're, a web, if you're a web developer uh, or if you work on a backend, then this is, that, that, this is the best uh, co correlation that I can draw. And the characteristic is essentially an endpoint that you can read from or write to or get notification from. That's how you should think about, it, uh, think about that. And now you know everything there is to know about uh, Bluetooth, uh, you know, logically speaking. Now let's look at some of the toolings. If your app has, if you have an existing app that uses Bluetooth Low Energy to communicate with the device already, you should try and look at how it does that. Uh, how it does that by just turning on HCI Snoop logs on Android. This is one of the easiest ways to dump traffic. And ideally, you want to sort of dump traffic even during the pairing process, so you understand how the pairing is happening before it can send commands. Uh, unfortunately for me, Sony's app uses Wi-Fi Direct, and that is a no-go. So basically, I cannot use this technique. So this was, uh, you know, th this didn't really work for me. Uh, so there is uh, another app that you can download uh, on uh, on uh, on the on the App Store. It's called Blue Sea. This is how you. This is essentially a Bluetooth Low Energy Debugger. This is equivalent to the Network Inspector tab in Chrome that lets you sort of in, in, in introspect what a device has to offer. So here you can see that I have a Sony A7R Mark V camera, has some custom uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, manufacturer-specific data. And, and let's look at uh, a little bit that into more detail. Uh, this Sony manufactured data, uh, this manufacturer-specific data actually has a lot of ancillary metadata associated. So, the first quartet, 2D01, is actually a Sony company identifier. So every company that makes a Bluetooth peripheral device has to pay a lot of money to the special interest group that is, uh, that, that is Bluetooth to get a company identifier. And then the next quartet identifies that this is a camera. So 0300 just means that this is how Sony uh, you know, advertises the fact that this is a camera and not a headphone. Uh, and 6500 is the protocol version, and then 40, 4531 is just the ASCII model code for E1, the letters E1, which just means it's an E-mount camera. Uh, so the, the only one thing, the, uh, of all the things that you saw here, the only thing that we care about is that the camera was made by Sony, and this is actually a camera. So that those are the pieces of information that we'll use when we want to connect to the camera. Because I can't use the uh, Bluetooth Snoop logs, I have to resort to something different. I have to use something uh, called a BLE sniffer, these are uh, you know, tiny pieces of hardware that you can buy on Amazon, uh, very, very easy to use and install. Uh, you just plug into uh, your computer or USB, and then you can sniff traffic. And when you sniff traffic, uh, it ends up, uh, you, you can sort of introspect that information in Wireshark. And so the way this works is you essentially filter for the GAT protocol in Wireshark, and it gives you the actual uh, traffic that, you, that the central sent to the peripheral device. And the one key thing that you need to do is you need to make sure that the Wireshark session turns on before the pairing process can begin, because the central and the peripheral exchange some information, which is a key exchange during the bonding process, which is, supposed, which is used to encrypt the traffic subsequently. Uh, if you have Wireshark capture that, Wireshark is smart enough to sort of decrypt that traffic for you and expose that uh, as uh, more information. And then uh, this is the actual GAT request itself. So, GAT is pretty, uh, a very simple protocol. It has, uh, uh, you know, some. It basically exposes three opcodes: one's read, one's write, and the other one's notify. And here you can see that we have a service UUID. Remember, this is a this is a 16-bit integer. Uh, so Sony has uh, a remote camera service with that UUID, and has FF01 as another characteristic that it exposes that you, that it reads from and, and and you can write to. And so with this with uh, with this in place, you have enough information to sort of do what you want. So we have discovered that the Sony remote control service is uh, this UUID uh, and has ex exposes two endpoints, FF01 and FF02. One is the remote command, and the other is the remote notify. And so taking a picture essentially becomes the following set of operations. The camera operates like a state machine. You send uh, uh, a hex 0106 to FF01, which is the remote command interface, which just, which just means reset. And uh, 0107 is something that you send to the camera to acquire focus. So remember, to take a picture, you need the camera to focus on the subject, so you need to acquire that focus. 
And this can be a long lived, uh, this is a slightly long running operation because the camera has to literally move lenses to sort of focus. And so the way the camera lets you t tells you that the camera is ready is it sends you a notification uh, on FF02, which was the remote notify interface that we saw before, with a payload uh, 023F and 20. With, when you're working with Bluetooth, you really get good, uh, you really good, uh, get good at reading hexadecimals. And so this is something that you'll like, that, that you'll become more comfortable with. And uh, finally, you take the picture by sending it uh, 0101, 0109. And then uh, you wait for the notification for the picture to be taken because there's the shutter rolls down. Uh, you, know, you take the picture, you write it to the SD card, and then the camera says, OK, now I'm done. And the way it notifies you is by sending you another notification. And then finally, you have to tell the camera to roll the shutter back up because, again, uh, it's like uh, that's the full protocol. And then finally, you can tell it to reset. So this, these are all the operations that happen uh, when you just click on a single button uh, on, on a remote that looks like uh, that, 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 that does a remote trigger. OK, so that was a lot of talk. Let's look at some code. Uh, OK, let's switch to. Yeah, so here is the Sony camera control that I, that I wrote that encapsulate all that logic. Uh, here I'm defining a Bluetooth LE scanner. And you can see oh, oops, that the scanner is actually looking at uh, the Sony ID, which is 021D. Again, you have to remember that Java is big Indian, so the, uh, or the byte order uh, can be reversed. And we're essentially looking for some manufactured data. Remember, the only bits of manufactured data that we're interested in is that it has 0300. And everything else, I just set it to zero because I don't, I don't care. And the way I represent that is I have a, a byte mask that's, that only sets the, those, those bits to one. And so the, the scanner knows that the only bits that I care about is 0300. OK. And then, OK. Uh, and so let's go back to the code. So now, let's, now we, with that, we have enough information in the scanner that it can find the camera. It can find the advertising packets. So now I can uh, look at the code to find and connect. And the way this works is essentially I look for the uh, first advertisement that fits my criteria, and I I uh, I, I get that advertisement. I look at look at the MAC address uh, on the advertisement to essentially uh, make that a peripheral. And then once I have the peripheral, I do two things: I try and connect, and then I also you know register a, a flow, uh, a collector that essentially relays the changes in the peripheral state. So if ever the device the central gets disconnected from the peripheral, then I can sort of transparently reconnect. And then let's just manage that session more, uh, more easily. And then finally, capturing a photo is pretty straightforward. You basically, you basically uh, acquire focus. And acquire focus is essentially reset, focus request, and then wait for the focus acquired notification on FF02. And that's it. And then finally, you can also uh, capture request. And uh, capture request is literally sending uh, 0109 on the FF01 uh, remote command API, and then we wait for the notification that says uh, that has the payload that that represents picture was acquired, and then we can send the shutter up request and reset. So if I if everything kind of works and my camera is turned off, I think at the moment yes, yeah. So if I run the code and I have uh, an Android device that's connected uh, uh, to uh, which is now mirroring, so you can see what what it's doing better. Uh, I wish I, sh I should have built this before. Uh, OK, thankfully, uh, it's launching fine. So let me just uh, uh, make this a little bigger. Oops, sorry. And then let's just do that. OK, so now you, you can see that uh, the app is essentially waiting to connect to the camera because uh, there's like the camera is literally turned off. Uh, and so when I turn this camera on, hopefully what should happen is uh, eventually the camera should start advertising its, its presence. And eventually, the phone should just detect that there's this now camera available that it should have been able to connect to. So it does that. And if everything works correctly, when I click this button, uh, it should take a picture. So everyone say cheese. Let's take a picture. And that's it. So like so here, uh, you know, we sort of looked at the protocol uh, from at from a very high level, sort of took a very cheap BLE sniffer that was available in the market dumped all this traffic to Wireshark and sort of figured out what it does under the hood. And so, yeah, that was pretty straightforward. I hope, uh, you know, like me, you learned something about Bluetooth LE in the process. So, yeah, that's my talk. Thank you. <laughs>